Good day, YouTube, and welcome back to the Troopers Workshop. Today, I'm doing a no BS review of Hot Head Headliners for Jeep Wranglers. As my fellow Jeepers are aware, the hardtop Jeep Wranglers are equipped with a thick, non-insulated plastic cover uh, over the passenger compartment, which can get pretty hot in the summertime, pretty cold in the wintertime, and it really doesn't do much to filter out the road noise. So the hot head headliners, say that three times fast, are insulating panels that you can install in the inside of the roof of your Jeep that supposedly mitigate all three of those problems. Now, there are several great install videos out there already on YouTube, uh, and I'll try to remember to put a link down below so you don't have to go searching for them. But rather, then reinvent that wheel, I decided to just do a review video that hopefully helps you to decide if these are right for you. So without further ado, let's get started. So this is the inside of one of the panels and you can see the 3M tape um, that is on the inside of the panel to help install it on the roof is all jacked up. Um, so I had to peel that off and replace it uh, with some spare 3M uh, double-sided sticky tape I had sitting around in my garage. But I think you have to admit, this is a very auspicious beginning uh, to the installation of these headliners. Okay, YouTube, so this is gonna be part of my no bullshit assessment of hot heads. Uh, panel liners. Um, so I'm going to show you this right now. I can almost guarantee these are going to pop off the ceiling of this Jeep uh, within the first week or two. Um, they are supposed to be cut to fit, um, but as you can see up in this corner right here, it's cut. The panel's cut a little long. It doesn't fit, and there is lots of flex. I'm trying to do this one-handed here. There's lots of flex up in this corner. It doesn't match up perfectly. So what's gonna happen is, this is going to start pulling the tape slowly off of that corner, and I guarantee it's gonna work all the way back until there's not enough tape holding this panel up in the ceiling. I'll be really surprised if I'm wrong. I mean, I'm gonna give it a chance, uh, but I seriously doubt that this is gonna last more than a week. Also, the fact um, that this 3M adhesive, okay, these are the adhesive strips, strips on the back. Um, these are super thin, uh, and they are not very tacky at all. I'll just kind of show you, I'll stick my finger on here. Yeah, not tacky at all. That is not going to be enough to hold this panel up, which means I'm either going to send it back because for damn near $400, I expect way better quality, or I'm going to have to go to the hardware store here in a couple weeks and buy some better stuff, which that's probably what I'm going to end up doing. And I'm going to ask for some of my money back because there's no reason why for that kind of money, I should have to mess with any of this. It should just work. So that was the front driver's panel panel that I'm showing you. And then this is the rear hatch panel. As you can see, it is not cut to fit very well. This corner right here has a lot of flex. This right here, I can tell you already, is not contacting the ceiling. It's been pulled down. So I think the same thing's gonna happen back here. Um, since it doesn't fit on here exactly, look, see, um, I just stuck this up here and there's already flex. Because it doesn't fit in this panel perfectly along this line right here, because there's this little lip, it's already starting to pull off of there. So I'd be really surprised, again, if that tape can keep this rear panel up. See, look at this flex right here. You can kind of see it bounce. This right here, again, not cut to fit. It's just a little bit like probably a quarter of an inch too long on either side for this to fit perfectly up in the panel. And it's already starting to kind of pull down. It's pushing itself down from that ceiling panel. And I'd be willing to bet, again, within a week or two, this is just gonna fall right off. 
So one of the other things that I noticed that is going to fight against us on keeping these panels up into the ceiling is you'll notice that there is a slight concavity uh, to these panels. And you'll notice the concave kind of shape is going to pull the panel away uh, from the ceiling of the Jeep. So see how it's kind of, again, concave in the middle? That's gonna slowly, because it's not gonna, it's not gonna reshape itself to the Jeep. It's gonna stay nice and stiff. It's real bad right here, okay? And even after you press it up, that tape's not gonna be strong enough to hold it to the ceiling of the Jeep. And it's going to start retaining that concavity and it's gonna pull it right away. Like I said, I'm guessing a week or two before these start falling off. I hope I'm wrong, but we're gonna find out. All right, so after the install's done, uh, I'm gonna show a little demonstration here on just the temperature difference between um, the top of the Jeep with and without a panel. Now I realize, of course, this isn't the most uh, scientifically accurate way to determine um, whether or not it's actually keeping the ambient temperature inside the vehicle down, uh, but it's just a demonstration to show kind of how effective the panels are. Um, I'll just do this real quick. So I'm gonna take my heat gun and I'll point it to an exposed piece of the plastic roof right here for a couple of seconds. And that right there is registering at 146 degrees. Do it one more time. Okay, 146 degrees there. Now we'll just go ahead and shoot it onto the panel. And as you can see, right where the panel is, not quite 120, kinda depends on where we shoot it, but anywhere from 114 to about 120. That is a pretty good difference in temperature. Uh, I can tell you, sitting in the driver's seat um, with your head <coughs> up near those panels, you can definitely tell the difference uh, between pre and post panels, especially in the winter time, because out here in Colorado, it can get pretty, pretty bitter cold, especially when I'm up in the mountains doing some skiing. And the cold coming off of those panels can be brutal sometimes. Um, I, I'm not going to wait until winter time to put this video out so I can show a temperature comparison. I think today is, is good enough. Uh, but anyway, so you're probably asking, well, what's the ambient temperature right now? So currently here in Colorado, it's 86 degrees. My Jeep's been sitting out uh, in the sun all day long. Um, so as you can tell though, the panels do a pretty decent job of cooling down these areas right here. And that's the majority of kind of where our heads are sitting, um, which means it's also kind of making the heating and cooling system inside the Jeep uh, obviously more efficient. Um, now I don't have uh, a noiseometer, what are they called? I don't know. I don't have anything to measure um, decibels and sound. Um, so, and I would have to do that before I put the panels up anyway, so I'm not going to do that here. But for my own personal observation, as anecdotal as it sounds, uh, I do believe the road noise is diminished uh, and the sound system actually sounds better in here also. One thing that I have yet to mention is the panels themselves uh, are coated um, with a fabric, kind of a fuzzy fabric. So some icing on this cake is that allows us to collect some patches. And we kind of decorate the inside of our Jeep with all kinds of patches that we're collecting either out on the trail or just stuff that you obviously see on the internet that kind of reflects your personality. But the uh, panels give a, a wonderful place for us to stick those. And they go up relatively easily, as you can see. You can move them around if you want to. And they stay there nice and tight.
Well, the old trooper was wondering just how long these adhesive strips were gonna last. And I think we're at what, six or eight months now, and this panel is already falling off. So just as I expected, I'm gonna have to redo those, as obviously the other ones are probably gonna soon fall off also. So after much deliberation, I kind of figured out that probably the simplest fix to this problem would either be more tape or Velcro. And I decided to go the Velcro route. So I bought some two inch wide uh, heavy duty Velcro. As you can see, I got the male stuff placed on the panel itself right now. I'm gonna go ahead and get the female stuff up on the roof and then we'll see what happens. All right, so that lasted about two weeks. Uh, the panel fell down again. Uh, so the good news though is the Velcro isn't peeling off of the roof and it's still intact on the panel. So it's easy enough to just stick it back up there. Again, the problem is it was cut a little bit too long. So the panel is just pushing away from the roof and I think that's what eventually kind of broke the seal on the Velcro. It's been up for about a month and a half now, so I'm pretty happy about that. I'm sure it'll fall down again at some point. It's an easy fix as of right now. If it keeps happening, I have an idea in mind. I might double up the Velcro and it'll kind of suspend it down from the roof so it's not pushing against it. Um, but I'll burn that bridge when we cross it. Let's go ahead and wrap this video up with some final thoughts. Overall, I'm mostly satisfied with the Hothead headliners. I think I'm going to go ahead and award 3.75 stars. As advertised, they do provide some much needed comfort from the outside temperature fluctuations that can come in through the hard plastic top of your Jeep. And I feel like the headliners do make a noticeable difference in the cab. So if that's what you're looking for, definitely consider getting these. They also seem to do a bit of noise reduction, and as a bonus, it's a nice place to put your patch collection if you're into that kind of thing. You just need to understand, though, a set of these may run you $250 on up to $500 or more, depending on the options that you get. That being said, there are some things that I definitely didn't like. First off, for the money I paid for the set, I shouldn't have had to reapply them six months later because the panels weren't cut to fit exactly as they should, and the adhesive tape probably should have been a little bit stronger. Now, to be fair, only that rear cargo area headliner came off, and it was a relatively simple fix, but the point is I shouldn't have had to fix it in the first place. Secondly, it seemed like the QA, QI team was taking a nap uh, when they shipped my box out. Because um, as you saw earlier in the video, some of the sticky tape wasn't even applied correctly, so I had to scrape it off and replace it. I shouldn't have had to do that anyways. But once I got the thing unpacked, it would have been easier just for me to fix it rather than pack everything back up and send it back to them. Lastly, the price. I feel like the price is just a little bit steep for what the panels are, and most especially considering that I had to fix a couple of things right off the bat. So anyways, that being said, if you're willing to pay for the comfort and the understanding that you may have to do a little bit of fix-up work on them later, I think you're probably going to be pretty happy with the end product. But, that's all I have for today. I hope you found the video to be useful. And if you did, maybe give us a like. Or even think about hitting that subscribe button if you like the content. Until next time, this is Trooper134 signing off. And I hope you're having a wonderful day.